Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. If you're interested in either one, commissioning or courses, follow the information in the description below and I'll take you to everything that you're looking for. While you're down there, if you don't mind, click on that subscribe button. It'll let you know when new videos become available and if you don't mind, hit the like button so that I know that you like what I'm up to. Today, what I'm going to show you in uh, this video, which took place over several days, is how to create a faux crocodile hide accent wall, which is right behind me. All right, now I did this wall in panels, as you can see, because I think it's more realistic versus having a long wall pattern going top ceiling to floor, which would make that crocodile very unrealistic and unproportioned to the surf to anything. He'd probably have to be or 20 feet tall and, you know, about a foot wide. So by doing it in panels, it's more realistic and I think it's a nicer look. Of course, it takes more time, it's a lot more effort, but it's a, I, I just dig the look. And I've seen it done on uh, a lot of projects that I've been around recently, more of smoking rooms where they've done this treatment. But I like this one and it worked well for this project. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials and let's get started. Okay, so here's where we're at so far with the wall. All I've simply done to get to this point is I measured the width times the height divided by four to get my measurements. And I have four vertical columns and then four horizontal rows. Now, when I do this texture, this paneling process, I have to do one side first or one panel, meaning this is taped off, so this will be one panel. This tape protects these three panels. So I can texture this one, then I'll come down and texture the one down here. Then I'll texture this one and this one, this one and this one, and so on. And then after that dries, I take all this tape off, and then this panel that was textured has to be protected, all that this will get taped off. So I gotta retape all this down, retape everything else in opposite, basically, so I can texture the remaining panels. Uh, but that's pretty much it, so yeah. It's a lot of, lot of pain in the butt rate, so um, time consuming. So it probably took about three hours to measure everything out. And I took a level, six foot level, to get all these lines. And I put a pencil mark everywhere, this way. Then I taped the perimeter of the wall first. Then I came back and taped off my inset, my panels. So now it's time to get the material and start doing the texturing. So let's check that out. Okay, so we're going to start on this panel. First thing we're going to do is take this rag and just wipe off any dust. If there's dust on the rag, that means there was dust on the surface. We have dust here. When we put this product on top of this, it means it's going to try to stick to a layer of dust and not to the actual substrate. So I'm going to take my big blade and the right good old-fashioned joint compound. Good thing the floors are covered, huh? I gotta cover the surface 100%. I need it to be even and uniform. Because if we don't have a nice, even amount on this surface, we run that blade, the uh, roller through there, it won't be. We won't have a nice even texture. Should be using my pan. Now, I don't have to worry about this being um, like a perfectly smooth, even surface. I just need a nice, even, uniform amount of coverage. Meaning, I'm trying to get this whole thing on there about an eighth of an inch. And I should just be using my mud pan, but I left it downstairs and I've already begun. So I'll do this panel and then let's get my pan out for that.
gosh, it's taking forever. Okay. Make sure you whip your mud up real good with a, a cage style mixer. Okay, take the roller. Dunk it in some water. Line it up with the tape, meaning the black line on the roller, a reference mark on the roller to the top line on that tape. Because I can see the top line of the tape, I can't see the bottom line. And lightly just pull it through. Texture. Roller. Dunk it. Make it wet so it slides across the surface. Find the line. Pull it down. Repeat. Lock it up. Make sure it's lined up this way. Flip it. So every time you do this, you're turning the roller. At least I do, some don't, but I like to spin it, meaning this time the cage is pointing towards me. Now I'll flip it, meaning now the cage is away from me. And what that does is prevents you from getting a very repetitive pattern. If you just keep pulling it this way, this way, this way, and this way, it's the same thing over and over. At least if you break it up a little bit or return it, it helps not be so repetitive. There you have it. Let's take a closer look, okay? Excuse the camera work here. It's hard to see because it's white, but you kind of get to see that. But that's it. So now we just have to repeat this process. Oh gosh. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 16 times. <laughs> Let's get to it. Something to keep in mind. It helps cut down on the mess. <clears throat> Remove the tape before that mud gets hard. Because that way, once it's hard and dry, it's going to get crunchy and fall all over the floor. But by doing this, it saves us a lot of little cleanup. And you kind of get the idea of how this pattern is going to come to life. That's the actual size of our finished pan panel. But I got to clean this up. There's a little bit that bled over here. In here. But see now, I can go to this panel, this panel, this one, and this one, and just keep on rolling. That's kind of the plan. Alright, see you in a little bit. Okay, so here's where we're at in the process. You can see some of the panels are finished and some are not. Alright, so now what I've got to do is protect this finished plastered section by putting a piece of tape on these three edges. And I come down here and I'll do the same thing on the four edges. Then I can put the plaster treatment in the void, that space there. And then uh, tomorrow, hopefully if it dries, prime base coat. So let's get started taping. Okay, so we run into a little thing here, the thermostat. So. I don't like going around the thermostat, I want to take it off. But what I'm going to do is take my pen, I'm going to trace out around it. That way when I remove it from the wall, I'm going to tape off where this goes. And the reason I'm going to tape off is I don't want the texture behind the thermostat. I don't want it sitting wonky. I want it to be nice and flush against the wall. So that way, one, I'll be able to pull the material straight down. It'll be a seamless transition. You won't see a stop and a start or anything sloppy. And the other thing is that when I'm done, this will set right back nice and flush, right where it belongs. All right, let's get to it. So here's where I'm on the project. The wall is completely textured. It's very hard to see it with the white and all the light, uh, but it's textured. And if you remember, I showed you, pull the thermostat off, tape the surface behind it, 
That way no texture builds up behind it so the thermostat sets flat against the wall. It looks much nicer. So the next part of the process, we're going to base coat this for our, faux, for our glazing technique. So we're going to prime and base coat all in one step. And here's what we're going to do. Excuse my head. One, two, three from Zinser, okay? This is a primer and it's tintable. So I've tinted it. Well, it's hard to see the color because it's still in the, the bucket. Uh, you'll see it when it goes on the wall. Here's the problem you try to get it tinted at the store. They don't leave enough room in the can to tint this product. So when you go to the store, pick your color, buy a quart can, have them put the gallon formula of the paint. Let me back up. So when you go to the store and you pick up your paint, you're going to get an empty quart can. Find your favorite color or the color you want to use. And they're going to take the gallon formula of tint, shoot it in the quart can, and then come back to the project, mix the can and the paint into a big bucket. And then you have the color you want. They can't put it in that can, the pigment into that can, because there's just not enough room. And that just is what it is, unfortunately. So mix it up and we're ready to go. Now, why I like this. This dries to an eggshell finish. It's $22 a gallon, $23 a gallon, and it's better than any eggshell paint out there. So one, it's gonna prime the surface. Two, it's gonna give us our base coat to do our faux finish glaze over top of. And it's got such a hard finish that the glaze is gonna have more time to work. All right, so for, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut this wall in. I'm gonna come back and roll it using my three inch purdy black nylon peacock bristle brush and a microfiber roller. Uh, I believe this is a purdy roller. Half inch snap because there's some pretty gnarly texture on here in spots. So let's get painting. Boom, finished painted. There it is, our base coat. So it's gonna dry overnight. Tomorrow I'm gonna to do the glaze. And when I say this dries hard, this dries super hard. Probably the greatest primer on the planet. And I don't want to jinx that because, man, they'll probably raise the price when they find out where it's a good product. So there it is. Uh, you can start to see the texture a little bit better. I know the way I painted the walls a little, little unorthodox. But you got to remember, there's a heavy texture on this wall. And as, you, as this progresses on, you'll see that. So, yeah, I tried to cut it in at first. I was having a killer time with the brush getting into those grooves. But because it's all taped off around the perimeter, I just rolled the roller into those corners and got it all in there. So we're good to go. Um, all right, so we'll see you tomorrow when we do the place. All right, so here's where at this part of the process. We base coated the surface using the one, two, three primer, tinted to the base color, and uh, it's dried. I put two coats on. So the next part of this process is the glazing technique. Where we're gonna need our glaze. For this, I'm just gonna use a uh, Spendrum more wall glaze. Definitely gonna need some more tape, okay? Tape, you need a three inch paintbrush, and uh, my good old green brush, because here's what's going to happen. If I go and glaze this whole wall at one time, it's going to look like just one wall being glazed. So what I actually have to do is come back with the tape again, find my panels that I've already made, retape it off. I'm going to glaze this panel by panel. I know it's going to sound like it takes a lot of time, but by doing it panel by panel is the only way I'm going to get that variation is so it looks like an individual panel or each individual panel versus one big wall. So let's get to it. So here's where we're at. You can see I've already started to apply some of the glaze and I'm doing my checkerboard pattern. Here's why. If I just glaze this entire wall one time, it's gonna look like a big wall. I wanna create these individual patterns, or, yeah, patterns, or tiles, or panels. So I did this with the plaster, as I showed you earlier, I taped it off, plastered one section at a time, then I came back, I taped it off again, and I do the glaze the same way. So let's talk about the glaze real quick. Where are we? The glaze is simply from Benjamin Moore. Okay, it's a water-based glaze. Took it to the, I went to the store, picked out my favorite color, which are not favorite, but for this finish, it's about three shades darker than the base color. They tinted it for me, and we have it here. We're gonna need a brush, pretty peacock black nylon bristle, 
we're going to use my good old fashioned car wash brush. All right, super soft bristle. Then we take our tape. Which panel are we here? This one? Sorry. I gotta look to the side to see what we're doing. What I'm doing. So I'm gonna tape off to protect what I've already done. Tape doesn't seem to want to stick. What else is new? Make sure that you're uh, not leaving any of the base coat exposed. I know you're like, this is going to take way too long to do. Yes, it does, but that's what makes it worth it. All right. Oh, this is taking too long. So, and of course, obviously the glaze is dry. I had to do this the other day, or yesterday, not the other day. Oh, well, this is the other day. All right. Yes, you're gonna go through a, tape, a lot of tape. I wanna say so far on this project, I've gone through two rolls of the two inch blue tape. Okay, there's that. Now, next step. Let's take our glaze and our brush. Dip some in. Let's put it on. You don't need to go crazy, meaning a lot of glaze. Because we're going to use the other brush to manipulate it and push it around. So the more glaze that we use, one, the darker the panel is going to become, which is okay. We're trying to keep everything in balance. Meaning, you don't want it lighter, too much lighter, too much darker than the other panel. Alright, that's done. That's all we gotta do. I'll take the car wash brush and I'll work it in circles, both directions, counterclockwise, clockwise. The reason is it's gonna get caught. I want it to get down in those crevices. Tapping it on the edge. Oh, Got to be careful. The tape doesn't want to stick very well. So I got to be careful not to lift my tape up. Now we're gonna come back, get a rag. Where'd she go? All right, back to it. Now you can take the rag and cut it around the edge a little bit. Let's blot some of this, blotch some of this off. Yeah, the tape just doesn't want to stick today. But the biggest part is we gotta let the glaze set up. See, if we pull too much off, it's gonna be too much lighter. But Glaze sets up and it gets firm. And then what happens is it'll create this really cool little like burnt effect. Basically we're burnishing the glaze. The more we work the glaze, it actually starts to get real shiny. It pulls it from the low spots, puts it on the high spots of the texture. It gives it that real warm look like worn leather, a warm, Alligator or leather, but without hurting anything. Just plaster. Now 
Now what I'll do is I will move on to the next panel. I'll leave this sit, and you'll notice that I will come back to it as the glaze firms up and keep working it. Meaning, just keep brushing over it very lightly. I do the circles, that way in case I make a mistake, you don't see any brush marks. All right? If you keep going like this, you're going to see brush marks if you make a mistake. And you notice the glaze will warm up as it uh, gets, meaning it'll dry darker. And it gets a warmer look. Right now it's kind of cold. I'm not a big fan of this color when it's wet. But let's see. You kind of get the idea of what we're dealing with. So you get the idea. You see the panels? Sure do. Now remember, there's still several more steps to this. This is just the glazing technique. I'm going to come back with metallics and really make this come to life. Alright, I'm going to carry on. Simply from Benjamin Moore. Okay, it's a water-based glaze. Took it to the I went to the store, picked out my favorite color which are not favorite, but for this finish, it's about three shades darker than the base color. They tinted it for me, and we have it here. We're gonna need a brush, pretty peacock black nylon bristle. We're gonna use my good old-fashioned car wash brush. All right, super soft bristle. Then we take our tape. Which panel are we here? This one, sorry. I gotta look to the side to see what we're doing, what I'm doing. So I'm gonna tape off to protect what I've already done. It doesn't seem to want to stick. What else is new? Make sure that you're uh, not leaving any of the base coat exposed. I know you're like, this is going to take way too long to do. Yes, it does, but that's what makes it worth it. So the glaze is dry. I had to do this the other day. Or yesterday, not the other day. Oh, well, this is the other day. Alright. Yes, you're going to go through a, tape, a lot of tape. I want to say so far on this project, I've gone through two rolls of the two inch blue tape. Okay, there's that. Now, next step. Let's take our glaze on our brush. Dip some in. Let's put it on. You don't need to go crazy, meaning a lot of glaze. Because so we're going to use the other brush to manipulate it and push it around. So the more glaze that we use, one, the darker the panel is going to become, which is okay. We're trying to keep everything in balance. Meaning, you don't want it lighter, too much lighter, too much darker than the other panel. All right, that's done. That's all we gotta do. I'll take the car wash brush and I'll work it in circles, both directions, counterclockwise, clockwise. The reason is it's gonna get caught. I want it to get down in those crevices. Tapping it on the edge. Got to be careful. The tape doesn't want to stick very well. So I got to be careful not to lift my tape up.
Now we're going to come back, get a rag. Where'd she go? Take the excess glaze and, glaze and pull it off. Take the rag and cut it around the edge a little bit. Let's blot some of this, watch some of this off. Yeah, the tape just doesn't want to stick today. But the biggest part is we gotta let the glaze set up. See, if we pull too much off, it's gonna be too much lighter. But glaze sets up and it gets firm. And then what happens is it'll create this really cool little like burnt effect. Basically, we're burnishing the glaze. The more we work the glaze, it actually starts to get real shiny. It pulls it from the low spots, puts it on the high spots of the texture. It gives it that real warm look, like worn leather. A worn alligator or leather, but without hurting anything. Just plaster. Now what I'll do is I will move on to the next panel. I'll leave this sit and you'll notice that I will come back to it as the glaze firms up and keep working it. Meaning just keep brushing over it very lightly. Do the circles that way in case I make a mistake. You don't see any brush marks. All right. If you keep going like this, you're going to see brush marks if you make a mistake. And you notice the glaze will warm up as it uh, gets, meaning it'll dry darker and it gets a warmer look. Right now it's kind of cold. I'm not a big fan of this color when it's wet. But let's see. You kind of get the idea of what we're dealing with. So you get the idea, you see the panels? Sure do. Now remember, there's still several more steps to this. This is just the glazing technique. I'm going to come back with metallics and really make this come to life. All right, I'm going to carry on. But you get the idea. That's it. All right, see you in a little bit. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask them down below. Feel free to send me an email at sales at the um, Do me a favor, if you don't mind, hit the subscribe button so you're notified when new videos become available. And if you don't mind, hit the like button while you're down there as well. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.